All right. All right. Enough of these monkey shenanigans, folks. It's time to get down to business. Let's uh, let's hop into that Discord chat. My boys are waiting. Boys. Very fucking is. Okay, let's let's do everybody's favorite part of the stream where we try to balance the audios because it changes from episode yeah. to episode for some reason, mm -hmm. from stream to stream. It's always mic so check, mic check. Sorry, check, check, check. <laughs> one, 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 one. Erich, yeah, I don't know if I changed anything. Erich, just mm -hmm. to uh, for the mic check, just perform your favorite Tupac song. Uh. <laughs> Oh no, is that the one with the N-word? <laughs> I think that's most of it. Five, five on I it? I know, that's a joke. Is that five on it? I don't think that's by Tupac, is it? Who is it by? Uh, they said in the movie that we watched, but it's definitely not Tupac. Wait, there was music in this movie? Damn. Wow. The the song... Black uh, we'll, music. You know what? No, 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 no. We'll get into it when we actually start the show. I don't want to... <laughs> because uh, I really like oh, what they did with that it? song in this movie. I think they did uh, something interesting. Well, I've seen it last week, so I'm already cloudy. I yeah, guess no, I can't it's, been, wait. it's been a little bit since I've seen it's it too, because it took so fucking long. Okay, so is, uh, I, long. I'm a bit quiet. Okay, I turned them down. I guess I'll turn them down some more. Damn. All right. Okay. I always uh, get turned down in these. <laughs> you turned down for what? <laughs> My poor volume. <laughs> turned down for who? <laughs> oh no. Okay. Uh, am I still too quiet compared to them? I turned them down. Yeah, how how are we? I guess we're right. Sounds good. Well, that's from Sheepover. I don't know if we can trust Sheepover's judgment on this one, folks. Damn. Uh, boys, I, I want to say before the show, I'm very disappointed in both of you that you would dare right. to do a live stream an hour ago reviewing Pain and Gain, my favorite Michael Bay film, without oh, even fuck. consulting with me. Very. I rude. forgot about that. Yeah, we could have had you come on the Irish channel for the very first and last time. Yeah, man, I would do an Is It Kino on Pain and Gain. I love that movie so fucking much. It's really good. <laughs> you guys betrayed yeah. me. You guys did it without me. I'm not even going to listen to your review because I'm so angry. You should <laughs> well, that's give us probably a list. for the best if it's your favorite. <laughs> give us a list of mu movies that you need to review. and Whatever, man. You're, you're going to be gone in a month. There's no time for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me and yeah, we uh, Florian to, will we... cover them all. Yeah, we need to step it up. We're going to review so many movies. Oh, man. Man, Mumkey, I, I asked a very dear friend who reviews movies to be on Isakino, and he said that you're too edgy for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, a very dear friend. Sounds wow. like you've got some shitty yeah. pussy friends. Tell your yeah, friend he's a giant liberal. fucking pussy. <laughs> he's trying to, to get a job in real TV. Could you oh, imagine wow. not wanting to do a podcast with me because you're trying to get a real job? How pathetic. I know. Yeah, I, what a I, fucking asshole. <laughs> what a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> what a cock move. That sounds I, like a real idiot. I bet he voted for Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even though he's British, he got all the way to America to, to vote for Hillary. I bet he voted somehow. stay. <laughs> oh. um, somebody says, can we vote to kick Erich off the show? <laughs> yeah, but we, we can't let him quit, but we don't want to kick him too early. Uh, yeah, he, he can't quit. He's fired. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if, he's, if he's fired, we have to give him his last paycheck. Fuck that. Oh, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. No benefits for even. Okay, so are, is the audio kind of... Is it okay? Is it decent? They're not way louder than me? I don't know. We'll wait and see what the chat says. <laughs> the chat is so reliable at... Did they, audio did good audio? everybody hold up the yeah. white supremacist symbol of okay to let me know that the audio is good <laughs> oh you did watch that part didn't you i'm guessing oh, this uh, donation was meant to be from sheepover saying she's cheating on me with asperger but it the filter mm. changed it to flowers <laughs> Very wow. confusing. nice wait asperger's is now <laughs> filtered uh yeah because it has the word ass in it the automatic filter mm -hmm. automatically takes that shit out why don't you whitelist asperger I could, but uh, we'll we'll see if the U.S. government whitelists Asperger first, and then we'll see what I can do. Well, maybe you should at least give him his own specific censorship word, like change it to Asbeater. 
Exactly. Well, no, that's even worse damage. I just say that's more accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I no. think. Bo I think he's a bit of an ass bird and a bit of an ass beat myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Oh, you'll you'll have to come up with the perfect way to to rename him. Yeah. In a way that is obvious and also insulting. Hmm. Which was the name he chose in the first place. It's uh, it's already perfect. Okay. Oh, should, should we get started with some uh, Kino <laughs> review, folks? Yeah, let's do this shit. Oh yeah, you're at his places Kino? to be today. Okay, I am. Uh, I'm now recording, so I will get us started. Whoa! I, I woke up like 20 minutes ago, and I really should wow. have done any sort of vocal warm up because my uh, my oh, my no. frog throat is not ready to speak. Are you gonna do the lift you in the a deer, a female deer. Ray, the guy behind the bar. <laughs> Me, the guy I buy beer for, la, 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 la. So, so you got up an hour ago, and then you told us you couldn't do it, and then you went back to bed, and now you're up. Yeah. No, no, yeah, you're right. That's, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> okay, shut the uh, fuck up. I'm starting the show. <laughs> Erich, Erich, shut up. All right. Erich, fucking, just shut up for one fucking <clears throat> second. Shut up. It's always ruining the podcast, Erich, man. just, for the love of God, just fucking shut your mouth. Stop. You what? know what? I'm leaving. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we, we go. Got, we got so close to getting started. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a Christian Bale yelling at that uh, camera guy thing <laughs> where he just flip the fuck out. I'm cheating Come on you with butt diabetes. <laughs> 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 At least that one went through. <laughs> okay. E oh, if go, if Erich will shut the fuck up. Mm hmm. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite movie review podcast. That's right, the one and only Is It Kino, the show that watches the new releases and tells you whether or not they are Kino so you don't have to waste your time and money going to the theater when there's a real shitty stinker out there, folks. I am your host, Monkey Johnson, joined as always by my temporary co host and really life partner in a lot of ways. We've We've shared a lot more than just this podcast. We've shared each other's bodies. We've shared money. We've shared children. One E. Rich McCoy. <laughs> oh, I'm doing good. Was that you it's cracking open a cold one? Child. That's right. Cold yeah. one with the boys. Yeah, Asperger was our child. We didn't want to tell anybody. He was a perfect <laughs> oh, clone. We, we, took, uh, we took 11 and a half of my chromosomes and 11 and a half of E. Rich's and, and formed the perfect <laughs> being. Asperger rap. Oh, you couldn't yeah. split the soul, and that's why he was just a mere reflection of you. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a truly soulless being. Also joined by everybody's favorite German defender. <laughs> Whatever that oh. means. <laughs> Springtime for Florian. Whoa! <laughs> One Florian Himsel. <laughs> it, it really is springtime, then. Hello, everyone. I am here, and I don't know how you're going to... To tell whether or not this is Kino. I don't think we'll be able to agree on if this is Kino. Uh oh, uh oh, wow. could it be? Podcast co-hosts disagree on something. Speaking oh, of disagreements, no. folks, we uh, we got some questions I would like to address before we go into the movie review. As we announced on the previous couple episodes ago, I think E. Rich will be departing this show after the Avengers Endgame review at the end of April. And folks, a lot of people are confused about the logistics of this departure. Like, a lot of people were very concerned. They had to know. Uh, As or, or, not Asperger. Asterios' <laughs> girlfriend, Sarantia, uh -huh. in particular, was very concerned about this. Will Erich still be Change legally name? changing his name to E. Bitch McSoy if Trump wins in 2020? And folks, let me tell you, the answer is yes, of course he will. Right, Erich? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah. There's no way I'm going back on that. No, even if he's not on this show, he's just apropos of, of nothing because there's nobody holding him to the standard because right, he's right. abandoned the internet. He will still be changing his name legally to E-Bitch McSoy come 2020. Right. Absolutely. 
Yeah, Can't it wait. will be his legal name as he is a teacher working with children and his name <laughs> contains bitch. It'll be perfect. But, but that's his first name. <laughs> it would be very disrespectful for the students to uh, refer to him by his first name. They would say, Mr. McSoy, Mr. McSoy, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> and he says, yes, you can. He says, kids, I I'm a cool teacher. You can call me E-bitch. <laughs> call me Mr. E-bitch. <laughs> I oh, know, and then the, the little children hold their, their ears closed because they they've never heard oh, such no. swears. Can I have put any interesting punctuation in the spelling of my name? <laughs> yeah, like you a bunch can... of uh, as long as it's called? technically Apostrophes? as long as it's pronounced e bitch McSoy, you can spell it any way you want. <laughs> Right. Are you gonna do the lead speak? You gonna use letters and and <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> three bitch McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. We also had people wondering, how will the show possibly continue without E. Rich? He he brought so much to the program. He had... <laughs> Why are you laughing, E. Rich? That's not nobody. A joke. Nobody is saying that. <laughs> no, no. I, I I've had comments on YouTube saying, um, I love this show, but I can't handle just Florian and Mumkey. This isn't gonna oh, work for shit. me. We we need <laughs> that perspective because like Florian and Mumkey are like you know the edgy alt right Trump supporting right. Uh, neo Nazis. And Everidge was like the the good-hearted, didn't do nothing, um, yeah, uh, self-hating white man of the show. The the balance right. in the force will be uh, forsaken. We it will it'll be off kilter. Will the show will collapse and fall in, in within itself? So that's why today uh, and Florian, I have not mentioned this to you. Oh, so let's see how you feel oh about it. Oh shit! I am announcing. An official contest called oh, America's no. Next Top E Rich, folks. That's right. Oh. I think people should submit <laughs> applications to be America's Next Top E Rich. Send them into, wow. I think it's the Is It Kino podcast at gmail.com. I hope that's the right email. If not, just send it to monkeyjones at gmail.com. Um, it might it, be Is It Kino123. Uh. Oh. I have no fucking idea. Send, send it to <laughs> monkeyjones at gmail.com. Right, right. With, uh, well, I, I want, the application should include a voice recording so we know how good mm -hmm. your audio quality, your microphone setup is. And right. perhaps, and Florian, hear me out on this. Perhaps if I oh. like somebody's application, we'll give everybody one shot. They can do one episode live with Florian and I. And mm -hmm. after we have eight good entries... The audience in a <laughs> tournament bracket. Oh my god! We can uh, <laughs> set these people against each other, and the audience will vote for who they think makes the best new third guy, the best replacement for the almighty Erich, and uh, and we'll we'll bring them back on and go head to head in these tournament matches, and eventually we'll come to the conclusion of America's next top Erich. What do you guys mm -hmm. think? That sounds like the best idea ever, but I got—I got to tell you, man, I, I got very blue pilled by Erich lately. I think I'm—I'm—I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a liberal now. What, uh, what are you gonna do, so th there's no <laughs> need for a third host. You're already the lib cuck of the it's group. It's all for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to enter this contest. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like when Charlie Chaplin got third place in the Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest. You'll, yeah, you'll right, lose right. your own replacement contest. <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, it did happen. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> e Rich will get third place in the replace E Rich contest. <laughs> Shit. He's not good enough. Not quite. Sad. Um, I, I do like uh people like uh Citizen Cinema. That guy, he's really great. He's got a great oh, voice. No. You don't like that guy, oh, Florian? Florian hates him. <laughs> Why do you so hate great. that guy? What's wrong with that guy? No, I just think he's very generic. It's always like oh, generic. Oh, yeah, I met that guy, guy in person. He's the good guy. Mm. All right, I guess we'll see. Oh, it's not like he's we're doing a Star Wars podcast. I'm sure he can have mm -hmm. opinions on normal movies. <laughs> no, it's always the bad guys being the good guys. I tell you, you, you pay attention to that. It'll always be that. <laughs> well, I'm, he must be a really big fan of Schindler's List. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I really can't wait to hear what these entries sound like. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is... This is going to be great. This is the official announcement because I'm, I'm not going to make a separate video announcing the America's Next Top E-Rich Challenge 
Because mm-hmm. if you want to be America's Next Top E-Rich, you have to be listening to every episode of this show. So the only Absolutely. way you can know about this contest is if you're listening to this episode of the podcast. I'm not going right. to let some random Joe Schmo off the street who has never listened to Kino before just hop onto my fucking podcast. You need to be a diehard yeah. fan who knows the memes. If you can do an impression of E-Rich and just pretend to be him, we'll just call you E-Rich and pretend like nothing has changed. I think that would be... Absolutely. You just have to be up to date on all, all the E-Rich memes, all of his political opinions. I think E-Rich, you should yeah. take the isidewith.com political quiz so people know exactly uh, right, where right. you stand so they can perfectly emulate you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Flawless. So, so, yeah. Anyway, that's enough of the, the, pre, the pre-Kino the pre mumblings. Let's, uh, let's hop into this film. We are here to discuss the newest horror blockbuster. From acclaimed Oscar winning uh, horror expert, Jordan Orange Peel. <laughs> That's the best joke I could come up with with this name. Annoying Orange. Not to be confused <laughs> with the African country of Jordan, um, offensive, that his parents would name mm-hmm. him after that. <laughs> I have to assume that's how it happened. Uh, e-, e Rich, what did you think of us? All right, so I went into Us. I always like to preface with my experience with this filmmaker because I liked Get Out, but a lot of people love Get Out. I thought you were going to say I liked a Mad TV. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I I do like Mad (laughs) TV. It's it's where he got his big break. The the rival to SNL was Mad TV, and I always found it to be much funnier because it Mm -hmm. was just like wall-to-wall racist and sexist jokes without even trying to be clever, and I really, really appreciate it for that. Mad TV is like lowest common denominator SNL, which works. It had Key and Peele, Bobby Lee, uh, Michael McDonald. Can you name a better cast of characters, E. Rich? Mm. Yeah, you Those Ryan Johnson. people, right? Did you say Ryan Johnson? <laughs> yeah, Ryan Johnson. <laughs> okay. Lupita Nyong'o. Don't Ryan Johnson's not right. in this Please. film. Damn. What did you think of us? Why are you fucking All stalling? Right. So I was talking about Get Out because I thought Get Out was fine. It was. You're the it was one who's going to be us? getting out at the end of the month. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So Get Out was good. Not great. Uh, so going into us, I was wondering whether Jordan Peele would cement himself as a decent, all right director in Hollywood or whether he would rise to the occasion and be visionary director uh Jordan Peele. Well, that's that's the thing about any filmmaker's sophomore outing, especially after right. having a really big, uh, critically acclaimed Oscar-winning hit. Is so mm-hmm. what? What do you do for your second film? Do you do the same exact thing again, and then everybody says, "Oh, he did the same fucking thing again," or do you do something mm-hmm. completely different? And people say, "Well, this is unrecognizable. I don't like this. Why didn't you do Get Out too?" So it's really right. it's it's a really tough way to to navigate doing your second film. So uh, and, it's well, uh, I, I don't envy his position here. I, I think us is kind of a mixed bag where there's there's a lot of uh, social commentary present in this movie, and it's also mixed into a regular good old horror <laughs> movie, uh, basically based under siege type uh, type story where you've got a house that is being attacked by a, a fearsome figure or family of figures essentially. And I think that part of the movie is well done. It goes absolutely insane by the end of it. And I feel like he's stretching. He's really trying to say a lot with this movie. And I feel like some of his ideas aren't quite uh, as good as maybe they should be. And he, he's, he's really trying to make a point here. And I'm not sure if it fits into the movie that he's making as well. So kind of mixed. I liked it, but... Wait, he's trying to make a point. What's that yeah. point? Yeah. Fucking when when the fucking uh, uh, doppelgangers oh, say spoilers. we are Americans. Oh, like, oh really? Of that course was... he's making a point. Wait, that, that, that was, was the point? Uh, that was some of the, the shoddiest, most obvious on the nose writing perhaps in any film mm-hmm. ever. We're Americans. If you ever are trying to make some sort of metaphor with your film <laughs> and a character ever says we're Americans, just fucking throw that first draft in the garbage. Are you fucking <laughs> right. kidding me? How embarrassing. <laughs> Are you so fucking very clearly? Should have said we're the bourgeoisie, baby. <laughs> we're the it's proletariat, the motherfucker. Yeah. yeah, right, right. I mean, that, that's what it is. Like, there's a lower class. There is a uh, trod upon underclass that lives underground and is is kind of not uh, like 
society does not uh, really acknowledge them. And then there's everybody else who's doing fine on the top, and they're they're living the lives that everybody should be living. All right, let's hear, let's hear what somebody from the master race has to say, Florian. What did you, what did you think of us? Yeah, I didn't see it that way at all because I think if you're gonna really make the, this movie commentary... that's like a big me metaphor for American society, the the guy who lives in Austria didn't really see it. Yeah, wow. right, right. Damn, stunning. Well, well, if you're gonna make political commentary, you can't make it in a movie that is just completely nonsensical on every level. That's just not gonna work. <laughs> And that's not even a bad thing because I like this movie. I think this movie is the greatest comedy of all time. <laughs> I, I've been really? The greatest comedy? <laughs> Have you wow. seen Monkey Jones Stops a School Shooting? That's the greatest comedy. <laughs> There's nothing funnier. <laughs> There's a scene where two men kiss. Can you imagine? I think you may be a little bit biased there. Hmm. What? <laughs> wow. Man, there, I, I was in the cinema and everyone was just being dead silent and on screen just the most hilarious things would unfold and I had to constantly hold in a chuckle. How do they do it? How do wow. people you held in a whole chuckle. Well, I mean constant. It's a constant chuckle. It was constantly chuckle. funny. Chuckle's a funny fucking word. There's so many C <laughs> sounds in there, K sounds. I was actually pretty pretty disappointed with how not interactive my audience was. Like they weren't really like reacting to the, yeah. any of the horror moments or even the fucking comedy moments in the movie. Well, it let was me yeah, nothing. I had the exact opposite of both of you guys. Yeah. I saw this movie in IMAX because I get IMAX. Wait, what? Yeah, it's, it's in playing IMAX. in IMAX. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, you missed out. Because as an a AMC A list subscriber for twenty dollars yeah. a month, I can see as many IMAX movies as I want for no additional Holy cost. Shit. So I just go see everything in IMAX, even if I, if I don't want to see it, I just like going to the <laughs> IMAX theater. My nice. theater my theater of IMAX patrons on a, on a Tuesday night was about one third full. And let me mm -hmm. tell you folks, the sign of a good horror movie, the number one sign of a good horror movie is when the audience is not laughing at things that are supposed to be creepy or scary. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of praise <laughs> For Lupita Nabongo's <laughs> Lupita Nabongo's uh, performance in this film, but folks, my audience, they had a very different reaction. Uh. This movie is uh, full of doppelgangers. Every character has an evil, or I mean, it's not. We're Americans. We're not evil. We're taken back to whatever. Who fucking cares? We'll get into that later. <laughs> Everybody has like an evil doppelganger that wants to kill them, and Lupita Nabongo's doppelganger, for some reason. Talk. Can, can one of you guys do the impression of how this bitch is talking? It's so embarrassing. <laughs> Jones. Yeah. It's, uh, it's supposed bit. to be scary or creepy or something. And I've seen a mm. lot of praise for this performance of, oh, what a dual performance. Like no other. My audience was <laughs> laughing hysterically at how stupid this bitch sounded doing this voice. Mm -hmm. It was so... Oh, I'm trying to be a creepy, scary person who's going all in in this performance. But it was right. just so laughable. Literally <laughs> laughing at the movie, not with it, at it, because well, it's so nice embarrassing. She got fucking choked the fuck out. Oh, what? yeah. Whatever. Her, her neck was fucking damaged. What? Yeah, for, for the entirety of her life, I don't think <laughs> yes, so. She got choked by a six year old girl for about well, five I seconds. Well, I don't, I don't think she was talking a whole lot underneath the ground, so she probably hasn't talked a whole lot, and... Oh, yeah. are, I we, mean, are we just jumping into spoilers? No, 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 here, here's the thing. Oh, it, the whole thing is spoiled, who fucking cares? Um, Erich, yeah. you're right, that is the logical reason why the character talks uh -huh. like that. But when the audience is laughing at your performance, you're doing something fucking wrong. You, mm -hmm. you can, I mean, you can so convey that in a way that is not hysterically embarrassing. I think horror and comedy are kind of linked in a way because oh, so wow. during during the visit, people were fucking laughing all the time because it's like it's like a nervous kind of energy that that's going through the room. Isn't when the visit an M Night Shyamalan movie? Yes, they're probably yes, laughing is. at it anyway. Yeah, they should. Well, I, I mean, Isn't that movie it's dog just shit? old people are disgusting and uh, True. it's very awkward. So like, True. it's basically like. There's some awkwardness in that, and I, I think I think the performance is a good one. I, I could definitely see why people would be bothered with. It's a very like over the top, very like <laughs> embarrassing character thing to yeah <laughs> be talking like that. 
I, I think it's it's something it's I would have done when I was thirteen, making home movies in my backyard. Like, oh, right, right. This is my creepy voice. Oh come on, it doesn't I, sound like that at all. It, it sounds it like dog shit. I think they overdo it. I think it, if it was used uh, in smaller bits, it might be better. Because she fucking monologues in that voice. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking... <laughs> it's so insane. Like, the whole scary living room monologue, the whole audience won't stop laughing in my theater. Man, I felt I, so I bad for the movie. I was embarrassed on behalf of the film. Florian was shivering in his boots. He was so fucking scared. Yeah, he was holding well, in I... his chuckles. <laughs> Not in that scene. I was finally finding out what they were all about. It was great. Yeah, right. right. I was fully invested at that point. <laughs> all right, folks. Um, this movie's been out for two weeks as of us recording this. So yeah, we're gonna spoil the whole thing. We've already spoiled mm -hmm. a lot of things, but um, let's just uh, let's have an open season discussion on everything about this film. I, I guess I haven't really given my perspective on it yet. Both of you guys had your turn, unless if right. Florian yeah. had more to say. Uh, well, I I guess I'll talk about it later. Okay. Um. Folks, l let me put it this way. If you want to know, is us any good? How does it compare to? Uh, how does it compare to Get Out? I'll put it at this: Get Out won an Oscar for screenwriting. Mm -hmm. Us will be lucky to be nominated for a Teen Choice Award, folks. <laughs> Th this movie will not touch the motherfucking Oscars. That you be better believe, I'll make that bet right now. Will not be nominated in any category. Are you kidding me? What a fucking joke. What a joke. Man, you really hated it that much? Jeez. I don't know, I didn't Ooh. hate it. I was uh, thoroughly entertained by the film, but it's not a <laughs> prestigious intellectual film in the way that mm. everybody wanted us to think Get Out was. If, if anybody tries to argue that this movie is on the same level, intellectually or metaphorically, as Get Out, what a pretentious fuck. No fucking way. This, he, he, you... he blew his load with all his smart, smart guy ideas with the first movie. This was an embarrassing feat, I gotta tell you. Every level of it. it when he's, the, the line, we're Americans, is when I said, yep, you're not getting nominated for shit this time, buddy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no sense of subtlety, uh, just um, uh, a, a twist, uh, or really a, a, an entire plot, so insane and nonsensical that you can no longer take the movie seriously. At least get out. It's like, okay, yeah, they're just transplanting a brain. I can, I can <laughs> believe that. Sure, that makes yeah, well, sense to me. That's fucking insane. Yeah, but, but there's but, barely anything happening in Get Out, though. It's all just suspense, yeah. and then it anticlimactic in the end. Yeah. You actually prefer Get Out? Oh, of course. I, I can suspend my disbelief I for like us, a brain actually. for a brain yeah. transfer. It makes sense to me. This one, the the story is so absolutely fucking bonkers that like right. it, you just have to laugh at it. It feels like a comedy. It's it's I, it's not scary at all. Yeah, Monkey, it doesn't I think make I sense on any any level. But the thing is, most horror movies don't make yeah, sense. Yeah, right, right. So I agreed with you in the theater it? watching it, Monkey, because when I was watching the third act of this movie and was going every, like, uh, red uh, jumpsuited figure is all holding hands and, like, forming giant, like, uh, hands across America type things, I was like, this is fucking insane. This is dumb. And, like, how do they live underground for that long? How did they like, get just... 350 million red jumpsuits, 350 million right. scissors? <laughs> scissors? Like, I, right, I don't right. want to go CinemaSins on look, this shit, but it's so look. fucking stupid that I can't <laughs> yeah, take it, it seriously. No, no, look, it doesn't Wait, make any sense. The problem that it's way easier to get. I want to hear what Ivor says. Those to items say, to, to have food for a whole life. Hey, let's Florian, let, let's Florian, let Ivor finish. Shut up a second. Like, okay. to me, when you take big swings like that, I appreciate those swings because that is not ever anything that I've seen in a horror movie. And I, I like the concept. Like, I like the ideas he's playing with. I'd have to see the movie again to, like, work through all the stuff. And actually, I think I might have fallen asleep for part of it. Ah! Um, <laughs> it was it was 10 p.m. when I was seeing this movie ah! and I was tired as fuck. So I think... I saw most of the end, but it's like the middle into the end. <laughs> I, I loved it, Rave Z Rich. I only slept through twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like I like a lot of the ideas in it, and because of that, I've been thinking about this movie a lot afterwards, and then like listening to the podcast and people talking about it. And Damn. I think he's got a lot in this, and he's trying to say a lot. And I'd rather have a movie that is kind of unfocused and doesn't fully like know what it's saying, but is trying to do a lot. Than a movie that is very precise, like uh, Get Out, but I don't think the 
the point is particularly well like you, in in know. your defense you use the metaphor of a big swing and i'll agree i mean mm-hmm. a, a big swing is by definition a risk high risk right. high reward you know what i'm saying folks big swing right. you might get a home run you might get a grand slam or you're, you'll probably strike out more often than mm-hmm. not sometimes well, sometimes great. sometimes hitting a double is is a lot better than a big swing and a miss, folks. In this movie, motherfucking swing and miss. Too stupid right. for me. Too well, I mean, yeah, that's definitely the risk here. Um, the movie's doing great, though. It's I'm got a lot of sure money. To make it's it. that stupid. I think it actually makes a lot more sense in the end with the twist. I guess. I mean, except for the the logistics, but now, it, it e- Erich, don't get don't get me confused here. When I say swing and a miss, mm-hmm. I don't mean. Um, critically or financially, obviously it's uh, oh. very successful. Most creatively, I'm I'm just talking about uh, yeah, not, not and creatively in the sense of what Monkey Jones likes mm-hmm. in a movie. Uh, oh, very. I, I'm living in a in a very very self centered world where I personally <laughs> believe it or not, in my personal mm-hmm. opinion, is that the film was stupid. <laughs> I know it, it might be crazy for you to to not give into uh, the temptations of the popular opinion, Rich, but uh-huh. individual people can also share. Their individual opinions without going to the mob when, and asking, oh, Mr. Podcaster, right. what should I believe? Tell me, please. One well, of the reasons I couldn't. It, though, didn't you? Yeah, you said you enjoyed it, though. Yeah, I enjoyed this it, will... but not as a horror movie, as a this movie is fucking stupid movie. Uh-huh. I, I, let me, uh huh. How is that bad? No, it's not, it's not bad. It's, uh, it's just it a mist? <laughs> because I enjoyed it, but not for the reasons that the filmmaker intended. I want to share something mm-hmm. funny. Uh, I, I showed this to you guys on Discord. This has nothing to do with my opinion. I just thought it was funny. Uh, no last way. night, my dad texted me. <laughs> Have you seen the yeah. movie Us? <laughs> I said, yeah. My dad said, stupidest fucking movie ever. <laughs> and I said, I my dad should replace E. Rich on his Aquino. <laughs> yeah. Make, I make, I make him send an entry. <laughs> yeah. I bet your dad is watching it, this episode right now and just agreeing fully with your <laughs> assessment. Oh, my God. I, I, I think know, it's could... I think it's undeniable that the plot of the film is egregiously stupid and unforgivable, but you can still enjoy it for the social commentary and I guess the potential horror elements, even though none of it was really scary. It was just kind of mm-hmm. hilarious. Yeah, I didn't really find it that scary either, to be honest. But how can you tell that the, the director didn't just play Amazing 40 Chess here, where he made a movie that is both perfect as a comedy to some people and then to some people perfect as a horror movie? It could be. How, how Jordan Peele's flawless? a very smart man. He won the Oscar for best screenplay. <laughs> yeah, he, he pulled it off. He he followed up this this amazing first movie. Actually, but it, it, it's it's just as good as that one. So there you go. <laughs> I mean, I I always liked Get Out. I just thought it was over over praised and over hyped. But this one right. is genuine. When I see ninety eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes, I think, wow, you guys uh, Damn. you guys are really <laughs> trying hard to love this movie, aren't you? It's not that fucking good, dude. Mm-hmm. But it works for everyone. It's either funny or it's it's scary. Yeah, it's perfect. Let, let's talk about the things that I genuinely loved in this film. And uh, here's the thing: I fucking hate Trump. And here's the other thing. I did not really look up the cast list before going to see the film. So when I mm-hmm. see fourth build uh, Tim Heidecker, Tim Heidecker, <laughs> I think, that. hold the fuck up. I never <laughs> thought I'd be sitting in an IMAX theater and see Tim Heidecker's name pop up fourth billing in any movie. He, mm-hmm. he appeared in Ant-Man and the Wasp as a cameo. What is he doing in right. this movie as wait, a no, leading wait, man? Wait. wait, he did? Yeah, he was oh, uh, doing a ferry boat tour. Oh, wow. right, right, right. He, he I probably know he slept was through that scene. Yeah, he was in Fantastic Four as well. Tim Heidecker was uh, in the Fan oh, Four oh, Stick. Oh, that great movie. Yeah, he was in Fan Four Stick. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> the beloved one. Because On Cinema had a come a competition between Greg and Tim. Because uh, <laughs> Greg was in Ant Man. <laughs> Yeah, so Tim Heidecker is uh, he's great in this movie. He uh, everybody when they're like doing the you know, I'm the creepy doppelganger one. Most people right. are embarrassingly bad at it, but his was uh, I thought genuinely creepy and good, and I really liked watching him because he's like he's we I only see him as a as a crazy funny goofy guy. So when he's actually doing the creepy <laughs> thing, it's like oh yeah, here mm-hmm. we go, Timmy, here we go, Timmy boy, you're doing it, Timmy. You wish on your fairy godparents to be creepy. You got that wish, my boy. <laughs> 
Right. Um, okay, so that's that's one thing I liked. Let's go around the horn. What did, uh, <laughs> uh, preschool uh, show and tell? What did you boys enjoy about the film? Oh boy. I, I so I really liked Lup- Lupita Nyong'o. Uh, she's the main character, and uh, Eridge, please. Her I, last I name was... is pronounced Nabongo. You're being very right, culturally right. insensitive. <laughs> Damn. I was very uncertain about her at first, just because like she's playing a very like detached role, and you you kind of understand that by the end of the movie. But like I couldn't really get on board with what her motivation was, and I I kind of feel like maybe she should have been trying to explain to her family what was going on, since she comes from the uh, underpass or whatever. Uh, fucking Jordan Peele decided to name right. that underground. Seriously, is that the name? Ah, oh, shit. Well, yeah, the underpass. So let me ask you this, E. Rich, because it's been about a week uh-huh. since Florian and I have seen this. Right. The the big monologue at the end, where the uh, Napito Nabongo is walking. Yeah. Uh, in a classroom, and the evil one is up at the the, the chalkboard, and for right. some reason, she's every time we see the one walking, she's taking another step, but she never gets any closer, and it. This goes on for about yeah. 20 minutes yeah. of her just t- <laughs> tiptoeing and then, I guess, taking a step back when we're not looking. Um, right, right. We later learn that, as a child, the do- doppelganger, of course, choked out the real one and forced her to live. So all this time, mm-hmm. we realize, oh, who we thought was the real Lupita was actually the doppelganger who stole her place in society. Mm-hmm. So and me, she's so, the one leading this revolution as right. well. Yeah, so so right. the, the original one is now leading the revolution because she's uh she's yeah. a normie. So let me ask right. you this, E. Rich. Why so in the fuck do, I understand why this is happening for the audience sake, but why mm-hmm. in the fuck does the the uh the original who is now the evil one, why does she feel the need to monologue exactly what the underground world is to somebody who has lived there before? Who is from there. <laughs> I think that actually stupid. makes a lot of sense. It's what? more, I think it's more for the no. audience. Yeah, it's no, it for the sense. audience, but but narratively, the two characters don't need to talk about this. They both already know it. I yeah. disagree, actually. I think, what do you mean? I, well, I think this kid was so traumatized by this experience and she also, they also share a soul, so she, so she doesn't know exactly how much of her memories are real and how much are fake. Mm-hmm. And, and she thought she was in this dark place, but she thought maybe it was a dream. And it was really confusing to her. And she had ser- therapy and everything. And it makes sense to me. It, it, it never made sense at the beginning before we, we before we saw this twist. It's like, why doesn't she know this? Why, why is she not more careful? Why, why does she take this seriously or anything? But now it all makes sense because she's confused about it, but she knows that there is something and she knows she's done something wrong. So she's not too, she's not sure what to do about anything. And maybe, mm-hmm. she, maybe she all made it up. So she's, she's doubly unsure. That could think, be, but I I yeah. think that uh, the the doppelganger who escaped knew full well all along what she had done because we see in a flashback when her parents are driving away from the beach, um, uh, she's like has an evil grin on her face, like a knowing grin, right. like I fucking did it, I escaped, I'm the badass, <laughs> I did what, <laughs> I'm an American baby. <laughs> yeah, but but I think the, like since they share memories and then yeah, like she she could just be told by the therapist oh well you have these weird weird thoughts and she probably didn't talk a whole whole lot uh besides how young was she this is very formative stuff yeah five or six years old can you remember anything from when you were six come on i mean sure if something like that happens it might be more memorable but considering you share the same soul you don't know which side you were on yeah but um uh, Lupita Nyong'o, the the escaped doppelganger, knows exactly how to get to the magic escalator. She knows exactly where to go. So clearly, she remembers all this shit and doesn't need to be retold that there is an underground society for no, doppelgangers. Right. Well, she knows now, but she didn't know to begin with. She 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 blocked it out yeah, of but, her mind. But we, the the uh, chronological sequences of the film, she knows exactly where to go to find the hidden underground laboratory, and then. Mm. The original Lupita explains the entire plot of the movie to her. But we know she already remembers this shit because she right. found the underground laboratory by herself. Hmm. Well, that may be true, but maybe they just both went there because one of them went there and they they still connected. I, think, I guess I'm making a lot up, but I I, I think it makes <laughs> sense on some on some level. I think uh, the escaped doppelganger 
never forgot anything, but she just uh, was eternally scared that the the things she did would come back to haunt her. And she like built up this great family and all this. And she's like, you, you live in constant fear and grief that the thing you did in the past, that bad thing, it's going to come back to bite oh, you. Right, right. So I think that's why she's all freaked out. I don't think well, that's she one has thing, any sure. problem remembering well, like her past. I really wish that within this movie, she was more cognizant of what was going on. Like, because they build up the twist the way it's going to be, you could always say that, like, she she has kind of, like, erased that part of her past, and she's kind of thinking that she's been this way the entire time on the surface. But, like, I really think that would be interesting if she was, like, trying to to explain all of this to her family in some way. Because she just feels so distant throughout most of it, which which makes sense. Well, but you, well, you, you, you can't do that because you can't have the lay epic twist ending that Jordan Peele yeah. wanted us to have. Well, right, also, she right. wouldn't explain it to their parents because he, if if she knows it's real and she knows that, that she shouldn't be here, she shouldn't be back in that place. Mm -hmm. so, so she wouldn't be explaining anything to anyone. And then maybe somewhere down the line, she forgot that it was all real. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. You you can always say that she like is trying to erase that part of her, yeah. Her life, but she clearly remembers it. We can't we can't but, pretend that she doesn't. Okay, so yeah, the, you can the, remember okay. something and not be sure if it's real. You can remember a dream. The obvious metaphor the all the time. The obvious metaphor here is that you are a poor person that has become rich, and you're trying to hide that side of your past because you're now kind of in a new status and to to recognize and try to like give power to those people that you left behind is kind of a scary thing. You realize that the people around you who have it less off and have have less than you do like are kind of in as shitty a situation as you are and you should want to help them but you kind of can't. <laughs> God damn it. Of course you'd think so. Of course you'd think that these literal fucking zombies would, would be the lower class of our society. Great job. It's the right? fucking easiest metaphor. Like, it, it's fucking like the zombies. fucking simplest shit. I don't need, don't I don't need literal millionaire Florian to tell me <laughs> about, <laughs> about the, the class system in this film, you fuck. <laughs> They're only that way, Florian, because they weren't, like, educated and shit. No, yeah, no, well, Florian, Florian, no a, as a, chance Florian, now. as a millionaire, tell me what you think of poor people. <laughs> uh, you fuck. Oh, boy. No, really, tell me, tell me what you think about these zombies. You think poor people are all zombies, only meant to serve you. Buy my game. Oh, you stupid zombies, get in line. <laughs> You better <laughs> buy Binding of Isaac uh, Platinum uh, Triple Edition. We're going to re-release the same fucking game for the 10th time because Florian mm -hmm. needs a new fucking Mercedes-Benz, folks. How me, dare yeah, you? Me it's playing... It's who's con conflating these literal zombies with poor working class people, and I'm the one who gets the shit for it, huh? <laughs> me, playing, me playing the new version of Binding of Isaac is just like those people pretending that they're on a, on a carnival ride. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, that, that was so retardedly stupid, by the way. How they just, oh! in, they're just in this underground room and they're just pretending to do all the same things. And they're going on a roller coaster. What, what if the roller coaster ends? What, what do they do now? Slowly walk back to the start? Go yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They, they, they pantomime so everything stupid. that is happening with their, their tethered yeah. person. Yeah, but then they would just run into walls constantly. They wouldn't be able to avoid walls intelligently if that was true. Well, why do you think that so, the little boy had his face all burned up? Because he kept the, the kid kept playing with that toy, and the, the, the boy mm -hmm. was lighting a lighter and, and burning his own face. They have to pantomime yeah. everything. Holy shit, I, even, I didn't even get that, but now it all makes sense. Oh yeah. my god, they're, that's beautiful. They're tethered. They're tethered together, and they're kind of like reenacting things that the people above ground are doing. And it's like... How do they do that? Like, how, how the fuck does that even work? <laughs> it doesn't, because it's a stupid movie. I know, it, it's incredibly <laughs> stupid, and, like, it's more of an idea than it is, like, a real thing. And Jordan Peele says that he has this all worked out, and there's a way that this all works. <laughs> how the fuck do they eat anything? They've got rabbits, but, like, rabbits can't fucking live without carrots and, like, whatever the fuck Surely they the eat. rabbits, they can right? have sex, give birth, and then eat their young all in the same day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And also, you can't live on a diet of just rabbits. Yeah, and also, there's never enough space for a million people down there. Mm -hmm. That See, that's, <laughs> that's the crime that Jordan Peele commits in this film. He thinks 
that if your metaphor and your social commentary is good enough, that the film mm-hmm. itself does not have to stand on its own and make sense as a narrative. When you <laughs> when you sacrifice narrative and plot and logic mm-hmm. for your lay epic metaphor and lay epic twist XD, I, I think your movie is uh, unbalanced and kind of fucking shit. Right. I think where he gets in trouble is he has a lot of details in here, but not enough details so it feels real. Like, the fact that there's this entire underground thing and the government has done some kind of experiment so they can control people or whatever. Like, if if there was fewer details, I wouldn't have as much of a problem with it. But because we already have some of it, it's like... It's like he didn't finish the formula. Like mm-hmm. it's like he gave it me half of something and was like, "There it is. That's it." No, 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 no. It's undoable, anyways. It's impossible. I guess that's the whole point. How did they all fit down there? How did how did the poor do it? How did they survive? Mm-hmm. Wow! Damn. Oh, everybody, Florian needs another corn pizza. Go pre-order <laughs> Binding of Isaac, a uh, twenty-year anniversary edition, folks. Mm-hmm. Need more corn pizza for Florian? God damn it, Mumkey! <laughs> Why don't you tell us what you think of this brilliant social commentary, then, Mumkey? It's stupid. Damn it. So it starts with there are like millions of miles of tunnels or whatever underground. <laughs> Nobody knows what they're for. They were dug for some reason. And this is essentially the bullshit explanation. I think it's fine to have that. But then as soon as we see people living there and shit, we start to ask way more questions than like, because like you'd have like vitamin D deficiencies and like th- there'd be a bunch of problems. That people run into. Are you telling me that all the time. that the the doppelganger of the dad wouldn't be a huge buff black guy just yeah, living underground no... with no workout equipment and eating rabbit? <laughs> yeah, there, Wait, there's. No is he more. working out? I thought he was just bunchy. I mean, he's a hmm. huge buff guy. How would he get that way? Damn! How does he do it on rabbits? I guess he's just really gluttonous down there too because of his counterpart. Like, hey, when people drive, what the fuck do they do? <laughs> Yeah, how do they go Is that fast? run as fast as possible? Good question. Uh, Erich. Okay, they sit there. They should pretend. <laughs> Florian, let me ask you a question. Do you have a coffee table in your home? No. Erich, do you have a coffee table? Yeah. Okay. If I if I were to handcuff you to that coffee table, would you be just right. stuck for the rest of your life? Yeah, I mean, I'm here for the rest of my life, guys. That's just how coffee works. Coffee tables famously weigh, what, five, six hundred <laughs> pounds? And they're unmovable? <laughs> what the That's fuck? That's another thing where... The metaphor or the the shackling thing doesn't work well, as well when it's made literal. Well, does was... it fit through the door, th- this table? W- bitch, man, there is no coffee table <laughs> in the world that I will, oh, yeah, would get stuck to. Are you kidding me? Fucking, you can yeah. move any coffee table. How did it get in the right. house? Did you have 18 <laughs> Machamps carry that shit in this fucking Pokemon world we're living in? What's going on? Yeah. It's a coffee you table, bitch. Stand the doors. fuck up. Swing that table at the bitch's head. <laughs> right. Well, I guess she didn't think of that then. It was like she was uh, handcuffed to prison bars. She thought she was stuck mm. for life. It's a coffee table. Yeah, Someone yeah. isn't she also shit. watched at the same time? Didn't she escape right after she she was left alone? The what? Didn't she escape when she was left alone pretty quickly? Oh yeah, she had to uh, MacGyver her way to grab. A, a fire uh, poker to break oh, the yeah, coffee that was table. Really hard for her. Yeah, like bitch, just kick it. It's a coffee table. Yeah. Damn. Whatever. Bolted to the ground somehow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll say um the 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 home invasion was like cool and and suspenseful until they mm-hmm. were all in the living room together, and then it got really stupid once uh, evil Lupita started talking. And then Mm -hmm. they all go off on, like, their one-on-one adventures where the kid tricks his doppelganger into getting locked in the closet. And the girl is running, and then the other girl is chasing her, and then they stand on top of a car. And then she runs. And comes out and yells at them. And then instead of running to get help, she just runs back to the family. That whole section of the movie was really fucking long and stupid and shit. But Mm -hmm. but But then once they go to Tim Heidecker's house, they thought it really improved. Oh yeah, those twins that are. Oh, actually, 
I, I didn't get a chance to say this before, but my favorite part of the movie is the is when they're on the boat with, with the evil doppelganger, and then the boat constantly starts and stops randomly, and mm-hmm. it, sometimes it helps the bad guy, sometimes it helps the good guy, and it's so hilarious. Right. And the, it's the, the bad chaotic, guy, neutral boat. Mm-hmm. I know, he, he's trying to fix the boat, <laughs> and then the good guy gets the chance to knock him out, throw him into the water, but then the boat starts randomly, and the good guy falls into the water as well. Yeah, that's, that's how a motor he, works, I think. He puts the boat into reverse, <laughs> then so neutral, good. then chaotic neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the I'd say the middle part of the movie meanders a little bit, and then when you get into the third act, it really depends on your uh, your state of mind, mm-hmm. your your personal preference as to whether that was the worst part of the movie or the best part of the movie. I mm-hmm. uh, as stupid and dumb as it was, I I enjoyed it on that level, and uh, right. the little twist that it was uh, she was the doppelganger all along. Yeah, that's like it's a cute little twist. I don't really know. Right. I think he was trying to recontextualize the entire movie with it, but I feel like mm-hmm. it doesn't really change that much for me. And, well, I, uh, I think the moving between class thing is is the main reason for that, really. Yeah. Well, it changed everything for me because it everyone's action did actions didn't make sense. Why do the why why do these people want to kill everyone? Why why do they wear all because right? they're why the poor they're and they're gonna, gonna fucking, fucking kill you? Life. You they keep have eating your cor- life. You eat your corn pizza and you people. drive your Mercedes. I'm gonna fucking kill you, Florian. I don't even have a car, you fucker. Oh. You, you're the you're the fucking you're, you're the bourgeoisie here. <laughs> oh, you think I'm car. rich? You think I'm rich compared to millionaire Florian? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! Be sure to pre-order season 18 of fucking Binding of Isaac. It's gonna be a uh a 100 man survival Fortnite parody Binding of Isaac this time, folks. Oh, oh, so oh let's do Binding of Isaac <laughs> Pokemon Edition. Florian needs a new pair of shoes, folks. Oh, let's do it's <laughs> fuck Isaac. Let's do other Bible characters. The Binding of Joseph. <laughs> Special <laughs> spin-off Bind- edition. Florian needs some new dental floss. God damn it, Mom can't stop. <laughs> Gold-plated dental floss. Oh, 100-year anniversary, the binding of Jesus. Florian needs to buy a a new uh, brain-soaked tank for when he transfers his body into the big cyborg monster because he's going to live forever, remaking the same shitty fucking game every goddamn year like Madden. Oh, Madden 19, Madden 20. What about binding of Isaac 19, binding of Isaac 20? Florian needs a new fucking shoelace, folks. Needs more corn pizza, folks. (laughs) <laughs> Fucking hell. Hook me yeah, up shoot, with more corn pizza. My <laughs> corn pizza <laughs> is the only thing that fuels the cyborg body, folks. <laughs> It's gonna be like Pokemon, you know, oh, oh, uh, here's a Binding of Isaac Ruby, Binding of Isaac Sapphire. A year later, same exact game, Binding of Isaac Emerald, baby. Florian (laughs) needs a new toupee. Fucking hell, stop. Oh, what's that? They're building a Holocaust denial museum next to Florian's house, and he, w- he wants to donate and get his name on a statue. Oh, better release the Binding of Isaac. Holocaust denial statue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want to you wanna do- <laughs> Florian needs to donate to the museum, folks. Better buy another copy of Binding of Isaac. What's the, what's the statue of? It's a view. Know. It's a statue of you that says the Holocaust is not real. Damn. But it's in German. <laughs> how would you say that in German? I know it's illegal to say that in German, but please tell me how that would sound. The oh, Holocaust yeah, that, is not real. Makes sense. The, the bad guy was really me all along. Jeez, now I finally understand this movie. You're the doppelganger wow. who escaped. <laughs> the oh, real no. Florian is underground. Eating, he's eating a <laughs> rabbit thinking that it's corn pizza. Corn pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Really, I envy the rabbit guy. More, I'd rather eat fucking rabbit than goddamn corn pizza. <laughs> Raw oh, rabbit. rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, I think I've said all the things I wanted to say. You guys have any other thoughts on this film? Uh, the music's very good. Uh, they did the five on it song, but uh, orchestral, and it works. They made it slow, it's and like they made it scary. It's a spooky violin uh, remake mm-hmm. of it, and I really like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um. Man, what happens now? All the all the guys are out. What what? They killed half the country. What what's gonna happen to them now? So many unanswered questions. And then they're just standing in a line. That'll show them. <laughs> Damn. Monkey, are you ready for the US cinematic universe? Yeah, I need to know. Kill. 
<laughs> returns to the Usaverse. Well, have you ever <laughs> have you ever heard of the movie Them? I know that oh, no. you know you you liberals have been fighting the us versus them debate for so long. You didn't even know that this movie <laughs> right. was coming out, but now now we can debate what's better, us versus them. What about they live? Us versus they live. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, what, what are you talking about? No. Why would we compare those movies? That's stupid. <laughs> oh man, cause let's talk about comparing movies. I, we just watched The Island earlier in, on the Everett show. Hilariously similar because they they also clone people and then they they weirdly have the same soul where they where they transfer memories. Well, spoiler alert for the island in two thousand two, folks. <laughs> oh, Damn Florian it. can spoil any movie he wants because he sold another copy of Binding of Isaac. Holy shit, folks. Bob King. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a Leonardo DiCaprio movie? I still got to see that. Don't think so. No. Oh. Wait, wait. Oh, Shutter Island. No, just the island. Who the fuck stars in the island? Ewan McGregor. Oh, yeah. I swear I there's like forgot. an island movie other than Shutter Island that Leo was okay. in back in the early 2000s. I swear to God. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I might be wrong. Whatever. That I don't know. So many islands. Yeah. Maybe uh, one of my coworkers back when I was 17 lied to me about who starred in this movie. Because that's what I remember. <laughs> I only, I only know happen. about it from this discussion I had six years ago. <laughs> Uh, so guys, what did you think of Winston Duke in this movie? Who he played Mabaku in uh, Black Panther, and he's back here. Wait, was he the dad? Yeah, he was the dad in this movie. Oh shit, I did not recognize him as uh, yeah from Jesus. Black Panther because Black Panther he's yeah. like he's like the big scary uh, mountain king yeah. guy. Right, right. Well, that that's just perfect casting then. Jesus, I didn't even realize. Yeah, he was really good think as was like fun. a stereotypical uh, you know sitcom dad. I thought. He I thought that I thought he was annoying. Well, well I yeah, he was really annoying. of course you would. You're I, I a love, kid, dude. I I love how he how he dabs because dabbing is like the perfect dad joke. But for some reason, the kids do it, and now he's dabbing it. Oh my god! Yeah, no, I, I think they nailed culture. it. The fact that Erich yeah. was an annoyed even uh, <laughs> makes my opinion stronger that they did it perfect. Like the annoying dad <laughs> who's just having fun and making his kids embarrassed because fuck you, kids. Mm. And Erich, of course, is the eternal child. <laughs> He's the well, childlike I Erich. About, I was more talking about his performance. Oh, the performance was annoying. Yeah. Oh, how so? Oh no, Erich. Is it because he literally is killing himself? Is, is that is that a problem? I think he's really putting on a voice in this movie. I think he's actually doing a Jordan Peele impression, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nah, you're right. Uh, what'd you think of his doppelganger? Was that I liked his doppelganger better? Yeah, he's like barking and growling and shit. What was he doing? Yeah, big yeah, black he guy. Had the best voice. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Florian? Uh, do you want to mention maybe the race of any characters in the film? <laughs> no, no you, you guys over there are really obsessed with race. Huh, Who was your favorite character? What was Intrigued your favorite that's... race that was uh, on screen in the film? Black. Whoa! What? Oh man! Wow! You really, that. You really well, did you rub off on you. Neighbors? Why are you a race trader, Florian? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> wow! No, you I, really I will be a good replacement. Black all along. <laughs> he was secret. Wow! I mean, no, you I'm, I'm, I'm partially brown, so I'm so I'm fine. I yeah. can sympathize <laughs> with these people, unlike you. It'd be cultural appropriation if you sympathize with these. Florian people. looks at all these black people and is just like, they're just like me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know exactly what their life is like. I can't wait to sell them uh, the Binding of Isaac African American <laughs> Experience Edition. Need to buy a new Corvette. I'm Florian, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to get him addicted to the Mumpkey Patreon. Everyone, go go Mumpkey Patreon because yeah. we're gonna we're gonna buy more clothes for Jumpkey Moan. <laughs> Jumpkey has not changed yeah. his clothes in years. You kidding me? <laughs> I know. We we need to make it happen. But I, I agree with Florian. Patreon.com/slash/Mumpkey. Are you saying that because you just watched uh, the new Monkey Box video that is now exclusively available at Patreon.com/slash/Mumpkey for five dollar and up patrons, Florian? Yeah, uh, five dollars and up. Damn, I guess it's yeah. good he released it just when I lowered my my thing. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh wow, thanks. <laughs> hey, I 
<laughs> I probably gave you like 30 bucks. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> if you are a patron and you haven't seen it yet, my new 50-minute epic video. Florian, you just, you just watched it, I assume. What is your review of this video? Should people go check it out? Yeah, it's good. I, I really like the monkey box. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. It means so much coming from a literal millionaire. Florian Himsel. <laughs> Gotta buy more corn pizza. Folk. Fo okay. Got, not again. Jesus. Let's talk about some real controversy, folks. I don't know oh, if you heard man. about this, but Jordan Peele, in an interview, said uh -oh. he does not want to make movies about white people because there's too many of them e rich mm -hmm. tell me why this offends you he says i've seen those <laughs> movies before right but i haven't seen jordan peele movies starring white people no i haven't that's true are you kidding so... me e rich you want him to make movies about white people no i'm not saying that no well there i'm you just go, saying man. i haven't seen those movies that he hasn't made <laughs> Let, here, here's the way I see it. A lot of people are, are saying he's uh, racist and that this is a double standard. I see it as the mm -hmm. opposite. For so long, us racist people have been saying, oh, oh, there aren't enough uh, women in video games? Then go fucking make your own, bitch. Oh, oh, there's not enough black movies? Then go fucking make your own. Now we, now we have a black guy who's literally making his own movies. Why would we tell mm -hmm. him to put white people in them? He's doing what right. we told him to do. He's making his own. Just let him do yeah, it. I Who know. cares? It's perfect. Right. Just fucking let better, him do it. Even better, they say do what you know. What does he know better? It's perfect. Yeah, that, that's why mm -hmm. it was uh, uh, defendable when uh, they made The Breakfast Club and uh, uh, John Hughes said, yeah, I didn't do a black character because I don't know how to write for one. It makes sense, like Florian said, just write what you know. He doesn't know what it's like being black. Why would he have a black character in The Breakfast Club? That's why. Surely this urban James this urban high school would not have a single black student in detention. It was really the most anti-racist <laughs> movie ever made. That's why uh, James Cameron made a disabled man uh, turning into a giant blue cat person who fucks with his tail. It's so relatable. <laughs> he knows. He knows what that's like. <laughs> He's speaking from experience. This wow. Nice. Irish is making walks. the the most anti Jordan Peele statement positions of the <laughs> podcast. Are you, do you are you just upset that now he will not cast you as the lead role in a movie, Irish? I'm very I'm very upset because I really want to work for Jordan Peele. I mean, you could be, yeah. be the Tim Heidecker of the movie. You just can't be the lead. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Uh, I can't wait to see, watch his Twilight Zone version, though. I, I saw that? that the the lady from Fargo season one is in it, and I was like, okay, I'm sold. I'm gonna go watch that. What, what's her oh, name? Oh yeah. Wait, what what? Who's that act I, from? Uh, I don't know. It was the, whoever played the cop to look it up. in season one. Uh, oh, 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 I, I know who you're I talking you about. Now. Talking about the fat wife. Well, yeah, she becomes the fat wife. She's she fat, marries yeah. uh, Tom Hanks' oh, no. son. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Great show. Wait, Tom Hanks. No, it's Tom Hanks's brother, isn't it? Colin oh, Hanks Colin is Tom Hanks. Hanks's son. Wait, really? Are you fucking kidding me, Rich? Is this a bit? Come on, I thought he was his brother. Hanks. Are you fucking high? <laughs> Colin Hanks is Tom Hanks's son. What the <laughs> fuck? What? He's like thirty years younger than him. <laughs> wow. Oh, you're right. <laughs> we just blew Rich's <laughs> mind today. Damn. Wow, you've just so, loved this amazing. Speaking of, speaking of people in the Hanks family, I was wondering a couple months ago whether uh, Tom Hanks provided the voice for Woody in Kingdom Hearts. But it's actually Tom Hanks' brother oh, who wow. does the voice of Woody in Kingdom Hearts. Is his brother's name Woody Hanks? No. <laughs> no. Oh, well, let's do that. I feel oh, like yeah. I knew this, but then I lied to myself and made it not so. Did you just say Kingdom Hearts? Who cares? Jesus. <laughs> did you, uh, some guy in the chat reminded me, did you, did you know that Tom Hanks has a rapper son who says the N-word in his song? Yes. Yes, I did oh know that. Oh, my God. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. With hard R? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the only shit. That's the name of his uh, debut uh, hit single, just the N-word. Wait, why does why does there need to be a hard R in rap? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know. That's not the kind of N word they use. <laughs> Whoa, you're really speaking for your people now, Flora, and you relate so much because you're half brown. Oh, jeez. All right, um, let's. Uh, we always end as a kino by doing you know recommendations around the horn. Mm -hmm. So right, I right. I will recommend the film 
Fargo season one, folks. If you haven't seen it yet, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why you haven't watched it yet. It's probably the best ten <laughs> episode uh, television event in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Go watch Fargo season one. Florian, what movie are you going to recommend today? <laughs> oh shit! Since when are we doing this? <laughs> this? We've been doing this from episode one. We always every end the time show with recommendations. Oh, <laughs> Oh man, I, I I know this. I know the perfect movie. Ah, it's Paint Your Wagon. There you go. Paint Your Wagon. What the <laughs> fuck is Paint Your Wagon? It's a musical. It's an awful musical. He made that, me watch. That <laughs> okay. And Ian, what are you gonna recommend? Uh, I recommend a movie I saw called The Dropout. It's actually a podcast. Uh, <laughs> and it's about the Theranos founder who uh, screwed everybody out of their money. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have a season of television, a musical, and a podcast for our movie recommendations. Not, not just men can cheat people out of their money. Women are doing it for themselves, too. Wow. What, do they make their own like I told them to? No. <laughs> Go make your own. <laughs> Equal opportunity. That's right. The absolute madmen actually did it. <laughs> they actually made their own. All right, folks, <laughs> don't forget to submit your applications. Email them to monkeyjones at gmail.com. If you would like to be America's next top e-rich, send in your, your voice application. Tell me uh, your political opinions. Uh, I, know, I know for a job <laughs> interviews, these are the things you're not supposed to say. This is exclusively what I want you to say. <laughs> tell me your, your <laughs> political opinions. Uh, tell me your thoughts on uh, race relations in America. I want to know uh, your favorite movies. And I want to hear how good your microphone is. Uh, and then anything else you think I should know. And if we get enough decent entries, we will do a an eight-person tournament bracket style mm-hmm. where the audience will vote and we will have America's Next Top E-Rich probably by the will end they, of the year. Will they be called E-Rich or will they just go by their <laughs> own name? Uh, if they want to do an impression, they can. But otherwise, I think they can be themselves. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Are, okay. are we gonna have wacky challenges to weed out the, the weak links? No, they'll just they'll join us for one episode of the show, and then people will oh. decide if they liked them or not. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Can't wait to to meet all these new people. Well, I mean, I I guess if a millionaire Florian wants to put these oh. poor young uh, uh, whippersnappers to work doing wacky things, oh, dance for me, boy, dance! Oh, I gotta eat this corn <laughs> pizza, boy. Come on, folks. Bye, Binding of Isaac, Dancing Boy Edition, folks. Yeah, you don't. Binding of Isaac card game, folks. <laughs> gotta buy another corn pizza, folks. Oh, gotta tip the pizza boy with some of the corn that fell off the pizza, folks. I hope he does this every episode. <laughs> the rest of the the rest of the podcast after he rich leaves is just gonna be making fun of Florian for selling <laughs> the Binding of Isaac oh, and no. being rich. Wow. I'm gonna do Irish. I'm gonna be made fun of. Oh, oh! Yeah. I, I gotta give Monkey five dollars a month on Patreon, folks. Buy the Binding of Isaac again. Oh, Steam code, folks. <laughs> Go to Bed Bath and Beyond. Buy a fucking Binding of Isaac blanket and pillow and towel, folks. That's it. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I like the recommendation section. <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite part. I'm glad we can introduce <laughs> a new segment when, when you're going to leave the show in a month. Yeah, right, right. Florian, <laughs> well, what the fuck are you ever going to recommend? He just recommended really, yeah. Paint the Wagon. No, 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 I know. <laughs> what is he ever going to recommend other than Paint Your Wagon? No, he should oh, only... Well, I guess it'll always be that. Yeah, yeah you, you should recommend <laughs> the same thing every week. A true Stuart <laughs> Wellington. Well, so this guy in the chat, Little Siberian Bear, says, what the fuck? Why are we talking about Binding of Isaac? Why do people not yet know that Florian <laughs> made the fucking <laughs> Binding of Isaac? Why is that still not a, a monkey known uh, I know. l- lore? It's all he fucking talks about, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can't <laughs> yeah, get this guy on a podcast without him bragging about his millions of riches from Binding yeah. of Isaac. It's all he ever fucking mm-hmm. talks about. <laughs> I don't know, man. Seems like you're the one writing it this time. You, you just want everyone to know about your famous friend. I know. I, yeah, no, I, I'm really no. desperate for people to know that I'm friends with a guy who, like, made a game. I'm like, come on, guys. Let's talk about Binding of Isaac some more. I want everybody <laughs> to know that I'm popular. <laughs> I, I can be friends that I with rich you people. Made it. <laughs> I can't wait for you to finally play it. Uh, I am one of these days. 
<laughs> my greatest accomplishment is being mistaken for the guy who made Binding of Isaac. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, you're you're happy that somebody mistook you for Florian. <laughs> yes. <Wow>. yes. <laughs> you're gonna paint that wagon. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, oh, this guy says no. Edmund McMillan made the game. Is that true? <laughs> oh, jeez. I didn't make the game. <laughs> no, I, I, I guess Edmund so did it by himself. <laughs> wow. Programs are unneeded, you know? Oh, Florian <laughs> just did optimization. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Florian, oh, you just got, you got fucking uh, exposed like, in the a... chat. Holy that shit, that's like the thing that game's divorce stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Florian, have you so been lying optimized. to me this whole time? Did you not make the game? You just play tested oh, yeah, it, it in the worse. final weeks. I just made it worse. It was perfect when Ed Edmund made it. And I just <laughs> programmed it so badly. Wow. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Edmund was prepping the bull while Florian made the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Mr. Sharp Yeti in the chat. What's going on? Uh, I, I probably didn't get any donations while we were going, but I got to check anyway, just so nobody feels like they got fucking robbed. Oh, wow, you got a Mr. Sharp Yeti smiley. Damn. No, he that's his. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. He has his own channel. Doesn't doesn't look good on black background, by the way. <laughs> that's racist. Come on. Look at it. <laughs> wow. You got black theme, right? Okay, no, we didn't miss anything. Good, thank God. I was Damn, so worried bro. that we would have missed one of these donations of Sheep over telling me she cheated on me with Asperger. Wait, wow. she donates to you? No, somebody put in her name and said that they fucked Asperger. <laughs> All right. Is this your business model? You just live off your girlfriend? <laughs> well, I mean, in several ways, yes. <laughs> Damn. Cannibalism. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh oh, she posted the uh, upset Rusty emoji in the chat. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, E. Rich, uh, what, what's on your, your table for today? You gonna go out with the girlfriend on a hot date? What's going on? No, nope, I'm going to visit my mommy today. Oh, going on a hot date with your mommy? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. I did not do today. <laughs> well, I woke Why up. Why the fuck don't you bring that fucking slide whistle onto the podcast, you fucker? Oh, uh, we're gonna replace you with it. Uh, okay. It's about as funny as you, if you ask me. Yeah, I can't wait. Hey, folks, I woke up twenty minutes before the stream. I'm uh, I'm still hungry, so I think we're gonna end it here, so I can go eat. How's that sound? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Food. What What movie are we gonna do next, boys? We got uh, Shazam coming up. Shazam. Okay. Yeah. We'll do Shazam, oh and then what's between Shazam and Endgame before Everett? We leaves gotta us. figure out. Are we gonna do Watchmen? You wanna do Watchmen? It, yeah, yeah. We, can, we can do Watchmen. Yeah, you already invited us, serious. You gotta do Watchmen. Yeah, yeah, we'll get a serious on too. I'll have to remind him that we're doing that. Yeah, Are right. we watching the series first or after? I'm just watching the series the isn't out fucking yet. movie. Watch the four-hour-long version. Yeah, I've had uh -huh. it downloaded on my computer for like three years now, and I just haven't Hell watched yes. it. Hell yeah! Oh. Okay. Download it. Uh-oh! Hmm.